And welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. It's basketball. It's hoops. It's ready, and it's in East Palestine. First-year head coach, one of my good friends, dearest friend in the entire world, Mr. Tristan Reynolds, joins us for technically, I guess, T, this is probably, what, two, episode two. I think two. I with, yeah. When we had you uh, announced, you came in in the fatigues. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, welcome officially as the new head be- uh, basketball coach at East Palestine High School. Man, how's it been so far? Uh, it's, it's been good. You know, it, uh, it happens in a hurry and, uh, you know, you're in August, next thing you know, you're in uh, November, you're getting ready to go play. So it it happens quick, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Now what's crazy is you're, you get hired and then all of a sudden kind of, you're the hot commodity. Everybody wants a piece of you and, and, and you're sharing your time, not just with the varsity and junior varsity and the basketball program from top to bottom. And I'm talking foundationally the bottom, like four or five year olds, which is amazing. But you also become uh, involved with the middle school football program and, and, you know, given your time there, what was it that made you want to commit to that and and really get involved and get to understand these players? Does it help, like, when you're talking to 7th and 8th graders, knowing kind of what you have the basketball, like, on the other side with the athletes? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, when you coach different sports, you get to see different uh, different pieces of, of the athletes that you have, the kids that you have, um, you know, what, what their drive is, what, what they like to do. Um, so – Middle school football was good for me, recruiting a little bit, recruiting some guys sure. to come out and play. Um, but, you know, you get to have a different conversation um, rather than, like, you know, basketball, basketball, basketball all the time. You get to you get to know them a little bit and talk about what they like and, you know, why they're playing. And for me, I'm not – I just like to be around sports, absolutely. So so when you look at this, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity. This is a program that it has a very proud tradition in this basketball program. You talk about the Binghams, the Burgers, um, and the coaching realm of it. What do you want to want people to remember about you as a coach? And you're a young coach. I mean, it's 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 a great opportunity for you, but you've you've got a ton of experience already on your resume. I think that's what a lot of people liked about you. So uh, one thing I want to bring you know to the table is, uh, you know, I didn't graduate from East Palestine, but I want to bring back the brand, the East Palestine brand, the Bulldog brand. Um, and that's kind of something we're, we're hanging our hat on this year. We don't really have a saying. We don't um, have, uh, you know, hashtag anything. Uh, you know, we say we work a little bit, but we have uh, Bulldog pride. That's, that's something we want to thrive on. We want to sell that brand, you know, be proud to be a Bulldog, get out there, um, you know, represent it on your chest every single day, night in, night out. And I think one of the coolest things about you is you are a just you're consistent, right? You, whatever you are, you're consistent. If you're playing sports, you're consistent. If you're coaching, you're consistent. If you're doing your job, you're consistent. People can count on you. And I think over the last few years, that's the one thing that's lacked in the basketball program is consistency because I think everybody's looking for not the I don't want to say easy way out, but everybody's looking for that quick fix. And sometimes you just got to put in, like you said, you got to do the work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're grinding every day. Uh, we're, we're we're in the weight room. We uh, we're working with the football coaches who have been uh, awesome to open up the weight room for us. Um, Coach Uriachi in there has been awesome. He's uh, been putting in the time with us. Um, you know, we we are working, um, putting in the hours. Um, started like I said in August, and now we'll, here we are in November, getting ready to turn the corner and go play our first game. So, uh, the, putting in the work from you know start to finish. And as soon as you uh, Step through the door. I always tell them, check the school stuff at the door. You know, we hit the court as basketball. Then when you go up, you go home, check that at the door too and go spend time with your family. Is it easier for you now? Like an old man like me at 37 years old, sometimes I, <laughs> I can't relate to these kids anymore. You know, and, and I feel weird saying that because I still feel young. But you're there. I mean, you can relate to these kids and you can and some of the problems that they have, whether it's on the floor or off the floor, you can relate to them. And, and you were telling me some of the just – quick stories about how that you can relate to these kids a little better than some of these other coaches can nowadays. Do you think that's as an advantage for, for your kids whenever, you know, you understand what they're going through, whether it be battling anxiety or things of that nature, you know, things from the classroom, things from home, because people don't talk about that. We talk about X's and O's and you're more kind of involved in the Jimmy's and Joe side of it as well. Uh, yeah. I like to think I'm a personable person um, that player coach, you know, I, you know, I take a lot from uh, Dabo Sweeney yeah. in that regard. Um, it's a, more or less caring. You know, if you care for him, you can you can love him harder, you know, coach him harder. Um, and, you know, 
I benefited from bouncing around from different schools, different programs, being in different schools, working in the Youngstown city realm. Um, so it all kind of comes to a head and um, every kid's different. Every kid's different. How you coach one, you can't coach another and how you relate to one, you know, you can't relate to the other in that regard either. So um, just being around and, getting and just caring and, you know, loving your boys. Absolutely. You talk about the, uh, the players being different coaches are different. And so, you know, you talked about Dabo, who are some of the coaches that have influenced you and, and your coaching abilities and your coaching ways uh, that you can kind of point to and say, Hey, if you know this, you're probably going to see a little bit of on the court, even if it's not the same sport. Absolutely. Uh, it goes back. Number one is definitely my mother, um, hall of fame coach, coach for 30 plus years. Um, she's actually on the staff this year with me. Um, and then uh, Coach Gates um, gave me a shot at the varsity level. Um, and I, I don't think there's anyone out there, X's and O's, and game prepping better than, better than him. So I take that from him. Um, Coach Berger, Jeff Berger, who I talk to on the regular, um, got to see the defensive aspect through his eyes. And, I, you know, I take that and add that to my game. Um, and then Sean McCune, who was here years ago, you know, the upbeat style, the energy. Um, that he brought from the Ursuline side of it. So, you know, you just take bits and pieces. I'm not proud. I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, you know, pr uh, pride myself up to say that I sure. don't take things from other people. Absolutely. I take it and I put my own spin on it. So let's talk about your kids, man, from, from a standpoint, East Palestine, you're going to get athletes, right? You're going to get guys that are, are committed to multiple sports. Very, very rarely do you get just hoopsters. Um, Talk about your kids. Talk about you know seniors down. What you're expecting from them, and, and who we're going to be calling their names. Uh, yes, yeah, so we got four seniors this year. Um, you know, uh, three of which started last year, uh, all lettered. Um, being leaders thus far, they were in the in the gym in the summer. Um, we got uh, two juniors that are hanging with us. I'm really looking forward to Shane Richardson this year, mm -hmm. putting in the work. Um, you know, he's one of those kids on the court where he's like he's getting after he's grunting during every drill he's yeah. you know pushing it you know you, that's one of those things you, you're like i like that i like that you know <laughs> gets you fired up um we got uh some sophomores uh, i'm really excited to see what owen uriachi can bring to the table this year uh you know he plays the one through the five for us he uh he's one of those kids say go tackle a tree and you know you come out two hours later he's still figuring out how to tackle that tree yeah um and then kyler Bourne, who uh coming off an acl tear the big fella big fella big boy down low um, you know, so this is his technically on the basketball court. He's still a freshman, but yeah. you know, he's a sophomore. So I'm excited to see what he brings. And then we, uh, we have a decent freshman group as well. Wow. We got about seven freshmen, which, uh, it's pretty awesome. So one of the things we talked about, and I'm so proud of you for is we already kind of glazed over it, but let's dive into it. The, the foundational programs. I mean, you talk about EPYSA, the kids that are in, seventh eighth grade i mean fifth sixth seventh eighth grade even deeper than that you get down to like the little pups uh like like my little guy i'm so excited because it takes a lot of commitment not just from um you being committed to the community but you being committed to those kids that let's face it you know you may never see them up at the varsity level some of these kids might not play basketball your hope is obviously to get them excited and about it but um, why, I guess the easiest question is why do you do that? Why is that so important to you? Uh, that's, that's big to me. Uh, you know, that's just like the foundation, like you said, of the program, like anytime, even if you're building a house, you want, you want a solid foundation. That's our foundation. Um, you know, and, and I like to see the looks on the kids' faces, you know, like, oh, that's coach such and such. And, yeah. you know, and go sit on the bench and, you know, watch them play and they get all excited, they get with their buddies and then they start to grow a little bit. And then, uh, you know, you're around, um, and it, it's, it's awesome. I, I love being around our kids and, uh, you know, I like pushing our high school kids to even get there too, because you should see their eyes light up. Like, uh, Mason Warner, when he sees Ryan Rose and his eyes get all big <laughs> and he's like, that's, that's Ryan Rose. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I love. So we push that, you know, at the end of the day, we're all one, we, we all wear bulldogs. East Palestine, we represent it. I love it. And the other thing that I wanted to bring to people's attention, obviously uh, a member of our community, a family in our community in need. Uh, there was a spaghetti dinner. We had the, the Crestview, or I guess the all-star game for volleyball at Crestview uh, for Winnie's Warriors. And I know that you made it almost mandatory to have your team there and work the event. Why Why is it so important to you to, to teach your guys stuff, not necessarily on the floor, but off the floor as well? Uh, representing um, you know, 
the bulldog way, if you will, um, and representing your community and taking pride in your community. Um, and, you know, it, it was important for our kids to go out there. Um, you know, our community, they show up um, night in, night out to watch us play. So anytime we get a chance to, to give back or uh, help out, we're definitely going to do it. Um, and uh, the winning, uh, winning for winning, uh, you know, my cousin Chad, um, that's his daughter. So a little bit biased there too. I made him show up to help, but uh, yeah. they were going to do it regardless. You know, they, they came up to me and they approached me too about it. Um, they wanted to wear their jerseys. So I thought it was cool. So they were there and they worked in shifts and they were helped set up, helped tear down. They were there the whole time. That's amazing. Um, you know, we're so proud of, of you, dude. Uh, me personally, you've come a long way. You've, you've always had the swagger. I can't wait for the world to kind of see the, the new improved and, uh, mature Tristan Reynolds. I'm sure you're going to have some blow ups from time to time, do some stomping, some patented stomping, but, uh, we're proud of you, man. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is, um, when people pay their hard earned money to watch Bulldog basketball on any given night, what do you want them to walk away knowing that you you and your, your staff and your team are putting out there uh, on the floor? We're going to put out a product that, uh, you know, it gets back to, you know, I said, and I'm going to come back to it is, uh, you know, Bulldog pride. We're going to get back to putting a product, a solid product, night in, night out, physical, fast, you know, playing tough basketball, being athletes, just getting after it night in, night out. Um, you know, from the tip to the final buzzer, win, lose, or draw, you know, we'll be there fighting. I love it, man. I'm so proud of you again. Thank you very much. Tristan Reynolds, the first year head basketball coach here at East Palestine. You can catch the Bulldogs this season right here on your sports network. Thanks, T. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.